Mr. Hamid, thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to talk to you about some IOL technology. Hello, thank you for inviting me to, to speak today. So tell me about your clinic uh, and the types of patients that you see in your practice. I've been in independent practice for more than 10 years now uh, in central London, uh, mainly in cataract and refractive surgery. I'm very fortunate that I'm able to see patients from their early 20s right up to their 90s. Um, and I'm able to treat a variety of patients from therapeutic treatments, for example, cataracts, uh, but also um, to give people spectacle independence when I do laser vision correction. I'm specifically interested today about some of the new IOL technologies. Talk to me about the Ray-1 trifocal and the Ray-1 trifocal toric. Do you have any experiences with these lenses? I've been using the, the Ray-1 trifocal and the, tri, the toric version of the trifocal for several years now. Um, I find it um, an excellent option for my patients who desire complete spectacle independence with or without some coexisting astigmatism. Um, the reason for that is they're, they're very happy with the results post-operatively. Uh, it's a very reliable uh, lens for me in terms of its spherical and astigmatic targeting, very good levels of visual performance, very easy to implant with a very smooth injector through a micro incision, stabilizes well in the bag, very easy to rotate to the correct axis uh, and doesn't rotate after that. Uh, so, you know, happy patients, happy surgeon. The Ray-1 EMV is an enhanced monofocal IOL. Can you talk to me about enhanced monofocal technology as a class? Enhanced monofocal technology, in my view, is probably one of the most exciting things uh, to occur in, in cataract and refractive surgery because we're able to offer patients, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of a monofocal lens in terms of visual performance, but with varying levels of presbyopia correction as well, whether we're targeting emetropia in both eyes or in combination with micro monovision. So you can offer this to patients who are you know, completely healthy in terms of their eyes, or even with patients with some level of ocular comorbidity where you wouldn't have offered a presbyopia correcting option in the past. Is there any type of learning curve when it comes to implanting enhanced monofocal technology? The great thing is not really. Uh, you can start uh, with just aiming for emetropia in both eyes. Um, and then you can progress with varying levels of micro monovision afterwards. You know, it, it's, it's technology that you've been familiar with uh, for many years already, um, but with that added extra of an extended depth of focus. Let's talk about that push and pull between emetropia and micro monovision when it comes to enhanced monofocal technology. Some surgeons always target emetropia. Others might target micro monovision and not tell the patient. Others are going to target micro monovision with the cooperation of the patient. So many different approaches. What's your approach? My approach is to have a fully informed discussion with the patient in terms of what their refractive uh, outcomes will be and what their desires for spectacle independence are. Um, you know, bilateral amyotropia is a is a good option for many patients. They'll still have great distance uh, and intermediate vision. And we know up to a third of patients, even with emetropia, will be spectacle free. But when you combine it with micro monovision, you get distance, intermediate and near vision with you know, high quality visual performance associated with a monofocal. Uh, and you know, the, the, the difference between the two eyes is not so great that they will notice that. So traditional monovision, only a, two thirds of patients would be able to tolerate it with micro monovision and enhanced monofocal. Approximately 95% of patients are able to, to tolerate it and benefit from complete spectacle independence with excellent visual quality. You've been gesturing the entire time to the number of options that modern cataract surgeons have. You have everything from trifocal technology, which is you know still the pinnacle uh, for spectacle independence, but you also have enhanced monofocal technology and then everything in between. Is having so many offerings good for the modern surgeon or does it feel like there are so many options that you become paralyzed by choice? 
No, I think it's really important to have as many options as possible. Um, it, the, the skill obviously is to tailor the options to your patients, depending on what they want. Um, and what they want is not necessarily what they tell you they need, um, but that's where the skill is. And when you come to a mutually agreed outcome, uh, when the patient is fully informed, that leads to you know, uh, better patient satisfaction postoperatively. Let's talk about the ideal patient for some of these technologies. Tell me who the ideal patient is for Ray-1 trifocal technology, and then also the ideal patient for Ray-1 EMV, that enhanced monofocal IOL. In terms of trifocal technology, the, the ideal patient is um, someone who doesn't have any ocular mor morbidity with a great tear film, reasonable expectations, uh, but also desiring high levels of spectacle independence. Um, so, you know, that, that would be the patients I would offer a trifocal lens to. In terms of enhanced monofocal lenses, the great thing is you could offer this to a patient that has, you know, pristine eyes uh, and they would be happy. Um, but you could offer this technology to patients who also have some level of ocular comorbidity. Um, so you can give them the benefits of a of the visual quality of a monofocal lens, but some level of presbyopia correction where traditionally you wouldn't have offered it to them in the past. Well, let's do a little role play. Let's pretend that I'm a patient and I'm coming into your clinic and you're about to educate me on the differences between bifocal technology and enhanced monofocal technology and any other IOL technology that's out there now. What tools are you going to use to educate me and other patients about these technologies? The great thing is now we've got a wealth of information available and uh, you know a variety of ways of imparting that information to our patients. What we try and do is to do that even before they come in, into our clinic, either in written form with you know patient information booklets or brochures, uh, which we co-brand co with our suppliers, for example, with Rayner, uh, on our website. But we also have animations and videos which can convey the information in a much more effective way, um, much better than the spoken word. This allows the patients to, to be primed, to understand what their options are, to have the right questions for themselves to ask us in clinic. It's a much more efficient way of delivering the information and allows us to have a more efficient flow for the patients once they do, once they do arrive uh, in our clinics. One final question before you go. I want to know how you're communicating your experience with Ray-1 trifocals and Ray-1 EMV technology to your colleagues. What would you tell your colleagues who want to expand some of their premium offerings? Traditionally, when we used to have conferences face-to-face -face all the time, we would have lots of informal discussions in between uh, lectures. And you, know, you would tell your, your colleague, look, you know, I've been using this technology. It's been great, really great outcomes. But I think something much more powerful is, you know, collecting your outcomes, presenting the data, including patient reported outcomes. And that really is beneficial, not only for your colleagues, for yourself, for you to know that you're doing well, but also uh, for your patients. And that also helps during the counseling process as well. If you can demonstrate data on visual performance and patient satisfaction. I learned a lot today, Mr. Hamid. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for your invitation.